Okay, in previous class, we were discussing about um, potential divider and, and uh, the same ratio case in if voltmeter is showing no reading in this case, in this particular circuit, it means the potential at V1 point and potential at V2 are same, and that can only happen if uh, ratio between R1 and R2 is exactly the same as ratio between R3 and R4. Now, using this thing, we make this kind of circuit. Later on, like right now, you might not find any useful use of this circuit with this diagram that, that is on, on board right now, but it can be used for some, uh, um, some purpose and we'll be discussing the next diagram. But let's see what is happening in this case. There is a cell with a known EMF on the top with EMF E, internal resistance small r. It, it delivers a current of I in the circuit. And this battery, this cell is connected to a long resistance wire, which has a total length of L. And it starts from point A and ends at point B. There is this junction near point A, or, or you can consider it as point A. Let's say this is point A, okay? Uh, we connect a voltmeter, which has, uh, like every voltmeter is supposed to have two terminals. One terminal is at point A, and the other terminal is a movable contact, J. It is a crocodile clip that we can move along the length. Okay, it can go away from A and towards B and come back to towards A as well. So J can move from A to B, anywhere between A and B. Now, first Jaldi, question. Jaldi. In this case, Jaldi, Jaldi. J, just one second. Now, uh, if we move J to towards B, what will happen to reading on voltmeter V? Okay, I'm not talking about the voltmeter V1, which has a fixed value over there. But what will happen to voltmeter V? Uh, obviously, uh, a voltmeter has infinite resistance in this case. So there's no practical current. Uh, ideally, there's no current passing through voltmeter V. Hence, reading on V1 should be constant. Now, if I move J away from A towards B, I mean, I'm, I'm increasing the value of X. X is distance between J and A. L is the total distance between the beginning and end of the wire. Now, what will happen if I increase X? Will the reading on voltmeter increase, decrease, or stay the same? Listen, when I'm changing length X, what is happening to the resistance of the wire from A to J? J. Remember, this is what we discussed when we were discussing resistance. What are the factors that affect magnitude of resistance? And we, we concluded that resistance depends on length of a conductor. So if you increase length, resistance increases. So as I move J away from A, X will increase. That means the resistance of the wire between A and J will increase. And when resistance increases, what happens to potential difference across that? That potential difference also increases. So reading on J should increase. And gradually, when you go to B, the reading on voltmeter V should become equal to V1. And if you move J to A, like if you make length X zero, the reading on voltmeter will be zero because both of the terminals of voltmeter will be at the same potential. And when both terminals are at same potential and voltmeter is, show, uh, is supposed to show potential difference, voltmeter will show zero. Now, if length is L, the reading on the voltmeter is V1, the one that is in the, in the top. And if length is X, 
then the reading on voltmeter is supposed to be a different value, the, depending on how big is X. If X is as big as L, then reading on voltmeter will be V1. If X is zero, then reading will be zero. But one thing is for sure, the reading will be proportional. Hmm. Because length and resistance are proportional and resistance and volt, voltage are proportional. So we have a double direct relationship between these two. So that means resistance is directly proportional to L, V is directly proportional to R, V is directly proportional to R, V is directly proportional to L. That means V is directly proportional to L. Now, the reading on voltmeter will be maximum when J is at B. And these are the calculations that you need to know. This is V1. V1. So, if you want to know Reading on voltmeter V, that should be X divided by L multiplied by V1. V1 is the reading on the voltmeter at the top. It is the terminal potential of the battery. So these are formulas that are important for you. You need to remember them for them. V1 will be EMF of the battery minus IR. And when you multiply V1 with X over L, you get the reading on voltmeter too. Okay, how, how did we get this? Listen, here we go. Uh, voltage, length. Voltage is V1, length is L. And voltage is V, when length is x. If these things are directly proportional, we can do this cross multiplication thing. So VL equals to V1x. So V equals to x over L into V1. Okay, this is how we get this formula. So these are important formulas, note them down. Or you can take a screenshot if you want to. Initially, I told you that uh, we will be putting this thing to a better use. Okay, over there, it seemed like just a formula. But now it is a use of the same kind of circuit. I hope you can see it is almost the same circuit as, as the previous one was, except there is an other cell in the lower circuit as well. This is point A. This is length X. This is length L. Okay. Same. I actually, I copied the same diagram from the previous page and printed it over here. J is a movable contact. A is point over here. I should have used the same thing. A is a junction. Another cell is connected over here. Actually, this is a competition between two cells now. There's a cell E with EMF, capital E, and there is a cell with E dash, EMF, E dash. E is a cell that has a known EMF and known internal resistance, and its potential difference is measured by using a voltmeter. We are using this circuit to find the value of EMF of that unknown uh, source of EMF. For example, this is a smaller cell. 
a chemi it, it can it, it, it can be chemical reaction some some chemical reaction is taking place somewhere and somebody wants to know the potential difference between the two terminals oh, in 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 that in that reaction or or uh, it can be two electrodes in electrolysis or or any any potential difference that needs to be measured with high accuracy and we we cannot uh, raise for the resistance of voltmeter because theoretically it has to be infinite but that is not the case with most of the voltmeters so what we do we, we set a circuit like this now in this circuit there is a resistance wire that starts from a point b and and that p and when we move j away from a the potential difference between a and j increase and this potential difference will try to set a current from point A to J, because remember, A will be at higher potential, J will be at lower potential. And, and this will be trying to produce a current from A to J. But there is another cell over there, which will be trying to produce a current from J to A. Look at the terminals of unknown cell and the known cell. We have put the known cell and unknown cell in opposite direction. So if you look at A, both of the cells are trying to put a, an opposite current at point A. At point A, they are trying to set a different current, an opposite current actually. Look, I is coming down and I dash is going up. I dash is a current that E dash is setting in the circuit and I is the current that E is setting in the circuit. And at point A, both of the currents are in opposite direction. Look, this is coming down, this is going up. They both are in opposite direction. So if we keep moving J for that sweet spot, a sweet spot means a point where J gets to a position that M meter a dash over there. I'm talking about the lower M meter, this one. When this M meter shows a reading zero, we lock the experiment. We note down the distance X. We know the distance L. And if reading on M meter has become zero, it means the current that E wants to set from A to J is balanced by the current that E dash is trying to set from J to A. Both of the currents are equal and opposite. That's why there is no current through M meter one because the potential difference that E dash has is compensated or balanced by the potential difference between A and J. In the previous diagram, we, we set a formula to find the potential difference between A and J. So here we go. Here are the things that we do. Uh, that I, it is a kind of key of the diagram. That E is the EMF of a known cell. R is the internal resistance of a known cell. I is the current that is set by the known cell in the circuit. M meter A is the M meter to measure the current from the known cell. E dash is the EMF of unknown cell. R dash is the internal resistance of unknown cell. I dash is the current that unknown cell is trying to set in the circuit. And A dash is the emitter that is showing current that travels from the unknown source of EMF. If A dash is showing no reading, it means the potential difference of or EMF of the cell is equal to the potential difference between A and J. So here is a step by approach that we need to do over here. So set up apparatus as shown, move J between A and B and wait for the reading to become zero. Reading on what becomes zero? On M meter dash, A dash. The M meter that shows the current that flows through the unknown source of EMF. Try to make that uh, ammeter read zero. 
when it reads zero, it means E dash is equal to the potential difference between A and J. And if you remember, X over L into E minus IR was the potential difference between A and J. So that has to be equal to unknown source of EMF. X is something that we can measure using a ruler. L is something that we can measure using a ruler. E is EMF of the known cell. I can be measured uses using current r is already known or actually we can measure e minus ir that would be v1 that we can measure using uh, voltmeter but if we are not trusting voltmeter we can use this equation as well so this is how we can find out emf of the unknown source and here are some important things. We don't need to bother about internal resistance of the unknown source. You know why? Because when there is no current, because ammeter A dash is showing no current. It means practically no current is flowing through E dash. If there's no current, there is no IR. If there's no IR, then terminal potential and EMF are equal. So that's why when we use this, even the internal resistance does not make any difference because the current is zero. And if current is zero, there is no chance that um, there will be any lost volts. If there are no lost volts, EMF and terminal potential are equal. So any anyone confused? Like what did we do over here? And how does this whole apparatus work? Okay, first of all, which question is this? This is a question from paper 22, February, March 19. Question number six. Using energy transformation, describe the electromotive force of battery and potential difference across a resistor. So EMF is energy converted from chemical to electrical per unit charge. EMF means some other form of energy has been converted to electrical energy. Energy converted from chemical to electrical per unit charge because it was battery, he specifically said battery. That means chemical energy has been converted to electrical energy. What is PD, potential difference? Energy converted from electrical to heat. Per unit. Charge. Remember the, the 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 difference between potential and and energy is energy means the total energy and potential means per unit energy per unit charge energy. So when you are describing EMF and potential difference, actually you are describing energy, but not the whole overall total energy energy per unit charge. So what battery is doing, it is converting chemical energy into electrical energy. What resistor is doing, it is converting electrical energy to heat energy. But when you are describing what EMF or potential difference are, you are just adding a term or phrase per unit charge over there and it completely explains everything. EMF is energy converted from chemical energy to electrical energy in the battery per unit charge. And energy converted from electrical to heat per unit charge is the potential difference. Okay, they both are the same thing, but um, 
opposite processes. A battery of EMF 6 volt and negligible internal resistance connected to a network of uh, resistors and voltmeters as shown. Resistor Y has a resistance 24 ohm and resistor Z has a resistance of 32 ohm. The resistance Rx of the variable resistor X is adjustable until the voltmeter reads 4.8 volt. Calculate current in resistor Z. Now, resistance Rx of the variable resistor X is adjusted until the voltmeter reads. Voltmeter, this is only one voltmeter. So this one, 4.8 volt. So if you know the potential difference across resistor Z and you know its resistance, how difficult it should be to calculate current. Is there a relationship between current, voltage, and resistance? Answer is yes. And the, um, the, uh, the name of the relation is Ohm's law. V equals to IR, I equals to V over R. So 0 0.6 divided by 4, 0 0.15. Ampere. Can can you please uh, calculate and confirm using calculator? The total power provided by the battery. Okay, if if resistor Z is getting zero point one five. It means the, is, is Sorry? You asked to check it again, right? Yes. Yeah, it's 0 0.15. Okay, thank you very much. So if Z is getting 0 0.15, it means battery is also providing 0 0.15 ampere. If battery is providing 0 0.15 ampere and the potential difference of battery is 6 volt, the power provided by the battery power equals to voltage into current. So it will be 6 multiplied by 0 0.15, 0 0.90 watt. Now, the number of conduction electrons that move through the battery in a time interval of this second. So it is actually just a long calculation, but not a, a difficult one. Number of electrons are charge divided by elementary charge and charge equals to current into time over elementary charge, current is 0 0.15. Time is given as 25 and elementary charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So, We can use a calculator. 6.25 into 10 to the power 19. 6.25 into 10 to the power? One second. 19? Sorry, sir. It's 2.34 into 10 to the power 19. Am I right now? Yes, sir. So I'm just trusting your calculation now. Okay, sir. The total resistance X and Y connected in parallel. Okay, listen. If um, 
4.8 is the potential difference over here and the total potential difference is 6 volt. It means the potential difference between these two point is 1.2 volts. So if they have 1.2 volt of potential difference and they have a total current of one, uh, 0 0.15 and, and they should have a resistance of eight ohms actually, because I, I can see that potential difference is four times less. It means resistance has to be four times less as well, but we can calculate it over here. The potential difference is 1.2 volt. Current passing through is 0 0.15. So resistance has to be voltage 1.2 divided by 0 0.15. So if I make number of digits equal after decimal, I can cancel the decimal with decimal. So it becomes 8.0 ohm. This is where you have to be very careful because there's one mark for the whole paper. Like if you make this mistake once or you make this mistake in every calculation, if you give your answer in one significant figure, you can lose a mark. One mark for the whole paper. So be careful. You, it, sometimes one mark is very it? important. One mark is very important. So when you see eight or two or seven or three or four as your answer, make it zero point four point zero or eight point zero or three point zero. Otherwise, it will be considered wrong. So eight point zero. Resistance R X. So we don't know this one, but we know this thing. One over X plus one over 24 equals to one over eight. Who can solve this one for the value of X? Three over twenty-four, two over twenty-four. Twelve. One over two over twenty-four is one over twelve. Twelve. So Rx will be twelve ohm. The resistance Rx is now decreased. State and explain the change, if any, to the reading in the voltmeter. When you will be decreasing a resistance of the variable resistor, the total resistance of X and Y will decrease. And, and uh, the potential difference across them will decrease. So reading on voltmeter, because it is connected across the other fixed resistor, it should increase. The reading on the voltmeter should increase. The reading on voltmeter will increase. As Rx has less resistance. So total resistance of X and Y decreases. Their PD decreases. So PD across 32 ohm resistor increases reading on voltmeter 
v will increase so in this document there are multiple many questions and just leaving the kirchhoff law questions you can solve all other questions okay but for for now so before okay, tomorrow sir. before tomorrow's class i will recommend that you solve first five questions excluding the one that i just solved and you can ignore the parts where you have to use kirchhoff law okay we'll resume from the same point tomorrow uh, yeah, no, first.